All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and I'm showing you the updated way to hook up your PlayStation 4 controller to Steam so you can use it as your controller of choice to play games. Because Steam has a lot of great built-in drivers, and they've added even more features with the most recent June 2023 update that changed parts of the UI. So first thing, get your controller in your hand, have a plug ready. Then we're going to go to the upper left hand corner, click on the Steam name, go to settings. Then we're going to go to the sidebar over here and click on controller. If your settings end up looking a little bit different than mine, it's because I installed the Xbox extended feature support driver. I would recommend it, but it will require you to do a quick computer restart. So just be aware of that. So right down here in this list is all of the additional driver support that you can get for Steam. So you can get extended driver support for the Xbox controller by toggling right here. You can get PlayStation support here, which is what I want, Switch controllers and even generic controllers from third parties that don't always behave well with every set of drivers. But we definitely want the PlayStation controllers supported, so we're gonna to toggle that on. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my controller, which is in my hand. And then once that's fully booted up and says hello, it'll pop up at the top up here and say, hey, do you want to enable Game Rumble? I do. You can also toggle if you wanna to use Nintendo button layout. So this is a Nintendo controller and you want that, it does support that since all it has to do is switch around the existing like buttons like A, B, X, and Y that you have both on the Xbox controller and on the Nintendo controller. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that allows you to display the shapes from the PlayStation controller. So and if, I, if that gets added, I'll do a tutorial on that. And then down here, if you're not sure if this controller is good or not, you can even do a test, which will allow you to check if your buttons are working, if all of this stuff is registering, that it's here or not, and you can even see if the touchpad is working. So that's actually a really nice feature so that you can test to see if it's detecting everything about your controller. Whoops, everything just disappeared on me. Let's close this. So that's what you can do to begin a test. If you're concerned that your controller has stick drift or you want to do other types of calibration, you can do that in here. In fact, this is already um, displaying my PlayStation buttons inside of Steam. So maybe it just does that automatically. But here you can see like all the different things that it's doing. If you're afraid that there's a lot of stick drift going on or that you need to recalibrate your motion sensors, you can click on this and it will walk you through the process. So it wants me to set down my controller on a stable surface and click continue, where it will calibrate the controller. And hey, it's actually doing a pretty quick job of that too. I've, I don't think I've ever calibrated this thing in the history of ever. So you've got the ability to automatically calibrate, turn on game rumble. You can even customize inside of the controller layout settings here, what the color is of the back LED. So that's kind of handy. And that's all underneath of calibration and advanced settings right here. The other settings that might be interesting to you is you can edit how all controllers behave when you're in desktop mode. That's when you're not in a game. You can also check out the guide button cord layout as well by clicking here. I'm not entirely sure what a guide button controller layout is for, but you can see that here and you can play around with it. Same thing for the desktop layout. This will control how it behaves on desktop and you can kind of slip through here. So this will be like, what do these buttons tie into and how do they behave when you're trying to use your controller as a mouse? I don't like doing that. I don't think a lot of people do, but if you want to tweak that, that's down here at the bottom. You can also toggle how long it takes for you not to be using your controller before it goes to sleep by toggling the shutdown timeout right here. You can go from never to 120 minutes. And that, for the most part, is everything you need to know about how to tweak your controller settings for Steam. They don't really let you tweak the buttons themselves to do a lot of other things that's more game specific. Because for the most part, what this is doing is it's pretending your PlayStation controller is an Xbox controller and then putting tweaks on top of that. So your mileage may vary for how this behaves in some games, but it should work fine, again, because it's pretending it's an Xbox controller, which is the universally accepted one 
for like all the things. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. That's been a look at how to hook up your PlayStation 4 controller to your Windows PC through Steam to play games with it as if it was an Xbox controller because it's you paid for it. You might as well be able to use it. And it's kind of nice that Steam has a lot of built in nice features and functions to make that happen. And it even looks like they put the PlayStation buttons in the game for you. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.